we will now discuss development of various various parts of brain from hind brain vesicle when pontine flexure affects the hind brain both the basal lamina and alar lamina occupy the ventral wall of the hind brain the basal lamina lie in the ventromedial position and alar lamina lie in the dorsolateral position sulcus limitans will occupy position in between the basal and alar lamina on both the sides the portion of hind brain lying in cephalic slope of pontine flexure is known as metencephalon and portion of hind brain lying in caudal slope of pontine flexure is known as mylencephalon the junction between the hind brain and mid brain exhibits a constriction known as isthmus rhombencephaly the motor neurons of basal lamina are arranged in the form of three longitudinal columns these columns are general somatic efferent special visceral efferent and general visceral efferent general somatic efferent column supplies the striated muscles derived from myotome special visceral efferent column supply the muscle derived muscles derived from branchial arches and general visceral efferent column supplies secretomotor fibers to various salivary and lacrimal glands it also supplies smooth muscles of alimentary and respiratory tracts as well as muscles as well as it also supply the cardiac muscles the cells of alar lamina differentiates into sensory neurons which are arranged into four longitudinal column this four longitudinal among this four longitudinal column two are visceral and two are somatic two visceral columns are general and special visceral afferent columns and two somatic columns are general and special somatic afferent columns the general visceral afferent column receives sensation from the viscera and it is it is connected with the organic reflexes the special visceral afferent column will receive the sensations from tongue and palate general somatic afferent column will receive extraceptive sensations from face scalp and external ear whereas special somatic afferent column is concerned with the sense of hearing and balance we will now learn the development of medulla oblongata medulla oblongata develops from myencephalon this medulla oblongata will be having a lower close part which will be having central canal which structurally corresponds with the spinal cord and upper open part this upper open part forms the lower part of floor of fourth ventricle in the basal lamina of myelencephalon the general somatic efferent column will be differentiated into hypoglossal nucleus special visceral efferent or branchial efferent column will be differentiated into nucleus ambiguus and general visceral efferent column will be differentiated into two nuclei the dorsal nucleus of vagus and the nucleus of glossopharyngeal inferior salivary nucleus of glossopharyngeal nerve whereas in the alar lamina the general visceral afferent column will be the extension of dorsal nucleus of vagus the special visceral afferent column will be differentiated into nucleus of tractus solitarius general somatic afferent column will be differentiated into spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and special somatic afferent column will be differentiated into vestibular and clo 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 cochlear nuclei the hypoglossal nucleus will supply the muscles of tongue the nucleus ambiguous which forms the special visceral efferent or branchial efferent component contributes the fibers to the 9th 10th and 11th cranial nerve and it supplies the muscles derived from 3rd 4th and 6th branchial arches 
the inferior salivary nucleus of glossopharyngeal nerve will supply the parotid gland it will give the secretor motor fibers to the parotid gland the dorsal nucleus of vagus which which forms both general visceral efferent and general visceral afferent component is the main source of the parasympathetic fibers of the vagus nerve the nucleus of tractus solitarius which forms the special visceral afferent component will receive the taste sensation from the different parts of the tongue the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve receives sensation of pain and temperature from from the region of head and neck and the vestibular and cochlear nuclei which form the special somatic afferent component are concerned with the equilibrium and hearing in the lower close part of medulla oblongata the special somatic afferent column will be persist as nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus Apart from this, alar lamina of myelin cephalon also give rise to the inferior olivary nucleus. The roof of myelin cephalon is formed by a single layer of ependymal cells covered by vascular mesenchyme known as pia mater. So, in the roof, this ependymal ependymal layer with uh, together with the pia mater forms the structure known as tila choroida. Afterward. the choroid capillaries develop and invade the tila choroida so that the tuft of capillaries along with tila choroida project from the roof of fourth ventricle so this tuft of choroid capillaries along with tila choroida is known as choroid plexus in certain area the ependymal roof projects outwards and finally bulges and ruptures the ruptured part part forms the foramen of lusca through this foramen of lusca cerebrospinal fluid appears in the subarachnoid cistern from the fourth ventricle